There's only one way to make money in the market right now. It's to buy Baidu and have it go up 83 points, therefore barring you from fucking up. Because even if I have a winning position at this point, there's no way to make money. You wanna see how badly I did? Ooh, you wanna see how badly I did? Let's take the high and the low prints of Broadcom on the options today. Every single print was me. Selling the puts at the low of the day, selling the calls at the low of the day, buying shit back at the high of the day, selling them again at the low of the day. The only way I'm going to make money in this market is if I buy options and the stock gaps up 80 fucking points like this. So I have no chance to not mess up. If there's an element of trading involved in the situation, the following day, no matter what I do, I will screw up. And I will tell you something, I flipped a coin. I flipped a goddamn coin. This morning when I saw Broadcom only opening up 50 or 60 cents on those massive numbers, I'm thinking, okay, as much as I want to sell this thing right now and get out of the calls and hang on to the puts, let me flip a coin. Boom! Oh, it came up, said sell the puts, sell the calls first. And the stock actually looked like it was starting to go get lower. Boom, got printed on my calls, the stock spiked a buck and a half. You can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. See, this is where it's at. This is where it's at. This is where it has to be. There's only one opportunity. I never be telling you to buy and sell and sell what I buy. The way that you can only do it is robot trading with my mind. Robot trading, because as soon as I lift the button, you need to get executed. That's the real true essence of what has to happen. That's the only way this is actually gonna work. Me talking about it and telling you about what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Nah, it's all fucking nonsense. As soon as the trade is executed, zip, that shit got to be put right into your account. Without even have to thinking about it. You just have to embrace the horror that that's what's gonna happen. You just have to embrace the horror that no matter what the fuck I do, it's gonna be wrong. It's gonna be wrong. So right now, right now, let me talk to you about what's going on. We had the Hartford, we had the Akamai and the Broadcom this week, right? So now I'm long the Akamai calls, okay? I went deep in the money with the calls, but I bought puts also. Now, somehow, I will fuck this up tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. It's 3590 right now, okay? Everything on the conference call was awesome. Everything I wanted to hear was fantastic. So what am I gonna do? My mindset right now is to hang on to these calls and try to milk these calls to try to offset the loss I'm gonna take on the put side, right? Okay, maybe I shouldn't even say this shit out loud. Maybe I shouldn't tell you what I'm gonna do because it doesn't matter. As soon as I do it, all hell's gonna break loose. And if I talk about it too much, look at that, the bid just left on the stock. It was 35.95 bid, now it's only 35.81. The more I talk about it, even when the market's closed, I can fucking influence shit. No matter what I do, it's me. It's me. And my wife tells me, maybe it's psychological. Maybe you have a defeatist personality. Maybe, maybe it's because you're thinking that things are gonna go wrong for you. I'm like, I don't think things are gonna go wrong for me. That's what happens. Look at the low print on the hack of my calls this morning. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna stay in bed till 10 o'clock so lest not to fuck shit up. But no, I decided to get up and I started to watch the market and look like we're going down, look at Broadcom. I don't know, I don't even, I don't even remember what the fuck. What was the story? What was the story here? So we opened up 35, we opened up at 35.83. Next thing you know, it's printed 35.50. I'm thinking, oh man, this thing's about to go negative. Blah, 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 blah. I flipped the call and I was like, yeah, I definitely sell the calls first. Sell the calls first. Hang on to those puts. Get out of those calls flat if you can and just make sure you can get, get, make some money on the put side. You gotta be out of your mind. You gotta be out of your mind. And within seconds of getting out at 35.50, the stock spiked up to close to 37. Let me put the hat on first. You know what it takes? I haven't even got in my pajamas the whole day. Here. Oh no! That's what it takes to make money in this market! Alright! I'm just gonna bang the. I'm just gonna bang the keyboard! And maybe something good will happen! Fucking elephant man! Oh shit, I just walked through watching shit as an acolyte. That's the only way it's gonna work. 
That's the only one I wake. Just get, go fucking club. Lobster boy. <laughs> Smashing the keyboard. Because if I actually start thinking about what to do and try to analyze it and react to the market, yeah. Talk about today. I, I, after after getting out of the call to the low of the day, all all bets were off. There was no possible way I was trading. And then we had the market start to sell off. I'm thinking, I better get back into these quid. I better get back into those quid. What the fuck do I call it quid anyway? I think it's just much more easy to say quid than QID. <laughs> oh, look at that. I'm, the Akamai bid's back to 36. Unless the stock goes to 40 at the open, somehow I will fuck this trade up. I will fuck this trade up. It's unbelievable. And then I see fucking Baidu going up 70 points. That's that's what I need. Because in somewhere, when it, when you gap when you get a gap of 70 points, right? It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. Shut your mouth. Shut up. Oh, shut up. Shut up. If I get a gap, see if Akamai was the gap to 40, then, you know, if I sell it at 41 or 39, at least I'm making something. And I know I'm not gonna trade it well. You know, that's that's an impossibility that I'm actually gonna get out at a good price and have it sell off. That's why it's absolutely phenomenal. I sold 140 calls out of my 200 calls on the Hartford Financial when the stock was above 30. And for that stock to actually sell off? I mean, there's gotta be something wrong with this company. I'm warning you right now, because we're going into Hartford Financial, that's tomorrow. Well, let's see how I fuck this Akamai trade up tomorrow morning. I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot heroin into my freaking eyeball this morning, tonight, just so I can stay into a coma till about 11.30. Till things start to calm down a little bit. But if Harvard Financial breaks 30, we all been waiting for the stock to break 30, and it doesn't even close at 30 that same day, and then gets slaughtered the day after? I'm thinking that we're in bad shape. But this is one of those moments where you think, oh, somebody knows something. Somebody knows something. The street's smarter than me. Or do we look at this as a shakeout? The faux show bro. The fake out. Shake out and then the breakout. Is that what's gonna happen? Well, I'm thinking about going one sided on this trade. So you know something bad's gonna happen. Because on these other trades, I've been buying the Paul, I've been buying the calls and the puts with a bias towards one direction. Today I'm biased long on the Akamai, therefore I bought deeper in the money calls and bought out of the money puts. Because I was thinking maybe this thing was going to go higher. And of course with the Broadcom it did the same thing. That shit didn't really work out too well. With the Hartford, <laughs> I'm thinking about just loading up on the 29 calls. And just crossing my fingers. And putting a bullet in my freaking brain when things don't work out. Because I've already shot my... I, I've already... This year already sucks. What am I going to do? Because this is it, people. I've hit the stage. I've been performing out in New York. And because there's no possible way that I can continue to do this anymore. And I, I'm not saying I'm not gonna be there to entertain you and educate you and tell you what to do, but I swear to, oh man, there's no way I could do this for myself anymore after this. After today's trade, no way. No way. And Biden's only 707. Oh, and also this one, my condolences to Don Harold. Don. You're my buddy and everything, right? I told you, for the love of God, do not short this Baidu. It's going to a thousand dollars. And I was in I was in Don Howe's chat room. Uh, I don't know about four or five times. And I appreciate that he lets me come in there and shoot the shit. I told you guys to get the Hartford Financial uh, twenty-seven dollar calls at a dollar. Those hit three fifty. Um, uh, I told you to buy the uh, Akamai uh, thirty-four dollar calls uh, about a, about that same time, and the uh, Broadcom uh, thirty-four dollar calls also. So I gave you three winners, Don Harold. I know, I know. Hey, now, now that when Baidu hits 970, that's a, there, there's when you start shorting it. 970. I don't think it's gonna crack that thousand. I'm gonna go 970 on this one. Huh? Yeah. I would much prefer Crow.